Alrighty. Looks like this is up. Green across the board. I keep saying every single time when I start a stream, I don't know if it's up. Eh. Should be up. Well, welcome to the 18th stream. Sweet 18. And once again, we're doing the same thing, just pulling up all the models just for fun. This one is pretty old. Actual spaceship. Really don't do a lot of spaceships for some reason. Hold on, let me get my windows proper here. Alrighty. Yeah, this one's pretty old. This one's in an animation that's on this channel, actually. If you can find it. Ancient history. Old, old, old. What have I been doing? Doesn't look like anyone's here, but... Oh well. This is what it looks like, anyway. Just a lot of greebles. This was a long time ago. Like, this was before I was using components. Yeah, well, here's a component right here, actually. Hey, what's up, Martin Man? What's going on? Not much is going on here. Just this spaceship. I made a long time ago. Has a lot of problems. There's a hole right here. This was before I was using components. Like, this whole thing is one solid chunk. Wow. Yeah. Actual spaceship. I have never. I don't really make spaceships. I guess because I feel it's cheating. Because. I mean, my art style is really good for spaceships. So I just don't do it. This one's pretty old. So, yeah. There's that. I started off with a little sketch. The sketch was like. Kind of like that. Fill in all the details afterwards. Life is good. That's good to hear. I guess, yeah, I can't say any different. Life is good. Wish it were better sometimes, but can't complain. So this is what this guy looks like rendered. If I can pull this up. Actually, yeah, just there's an animation ancient history animation somewhere on this channel. You've probably already seen it. And there's this also this picture. Which I saved it as a PNG and it's 66 megabytes for some reason. It's like a mock-up cockpit. Like someone's scanning the thing. It's got his little console right here. So there's a spaceship. There's his co-pilot doing the what the F sign. I guess that's the global what the F sign for people driving. There it is. All that stuff. This took a while. That was a long time ago, so whatever. Anyway. What will we be doing today? Let's see. Well, I was working on the pipes. If procrastinating is what you mean by working on the pipes. I think we'll go with some calm music for now. Yeah. I mean, life is good, except whenever you're just kind of sputtering in it, it's like, eh, kind of demotivating. But yeah, here we go. Here's some tubes. Still, I haven't got as much done as I wanted. Like, most of this was done the last few days, because I only got the last few days to do it. 
So just made it out of some of this mess. Split it off a little bit so we know what we got. We're experimenting with some subdivision. Get some interesting effects. I think we might mess around with that a little bit today. Just like make random things and see what comes out of it. Because this is all kind of new to me still. Interesting. I can make some funny stuff. Huh. Also, like right here, we got this thing. It's like a spear with these interconnected torus rings. What you could do is just make a box like this and just subdivide it. You get kind of the same result. Which is interesting. I wouldn't say higher quality, but it's faster. Huh. Some tubes. I was trying to experiment here with True Bend. Like, we were trying to do something like this. Where you go like that. The problem is, it only subdivides a certain amount. Like, this is not quite enough polys. This is nice, but it's not quite enough polys, so it didn't work for me. So a lot of this was just custom. What are my top three favorite movies? Hmm. I honestly... I can't... Hmm, I don't really watch a lot of movies. I can, a lot of good ones come to mind, but none of them are my favorite. Uh, let me think. Toy Story is nice. Uh, what else is good? Robots is good. Like I like the animated stuff. I mean, there's some other serious ones, like, what else? Jurassic Park's pretty good. Those are my favorites, I suppose. The Ring was scary. Insidious was nice. Annabelle, the prequel, was very nice. I like that. Oh yeah, so, with the tubes. So, I made all these. Dumb tubes, split them off. I figured something out. So if you're gonna have these tubes, what I had them was like this, where they're like, just together like this. And that was the whole tube, like that. But I figured out, that if you split it up, and put everything in its own half, your file size is half as much as if you had it exploded. Like this, it's only really taking into account just this right here, then you instance it off like that. So that's half the file size. Interesting. Split these off. Idea is with the tubes, they're gonna be like this, so there's additional complexity when you're going through them. So we made some subsets of those. We got our intersections. All your capillary tunnels. Oh well, yeah, I, I don't really watch a whole lot of movies. I'm more of a game kind of guy. Playing Valheim recently. It's nice. With friends. I mean, to, when you're alone it could be kind of tedious. And satisfactory too. One of those friend type games. And, oh yeah, with the tubes, I had this right here. Like, I was kind of looking at this right here, I was like, hmm, we need this to go through the tubes. The one way you could do it is grab an instance, and put it on there, and then use a plugin called, what do you call it? Copy along curve. It just grabs it. We'll put the spacing out on 50. A little bit more. And it just puts it along there. Which doesn't quite follow it. I mean, if it could follow it, it would be nice. It's good for making tank treads. 
So I found another plugin. It's called Shape Bender. And what is that? What it does? It takes your input geometry, Shape Bender, and it takes a line aligned on the red axis, and it superimposes it onto a different spline. It does that thing. Which is interesting. Problem is, it does not follow the spline. It goes up. Everything is perpendicular. Parallel, actually. Like that. It doesn't actually follow it. So that's not what I wanted. I mean, that's good to know, but not what I wanted. So I went back to Flowify. Flowify is where it takes this and bends it on along this. So we set that up. And then we get this from it. Which is also interesting. Problem is, it bends along the path. You just don't know what you want sometimes. Do you want it to bend the path or not? I mean, that is what we wanted, so... That's one way to do it. So that's what we're going to do for all of this right here. So we have these pieces. We'll probably do it from the rest of them. Something like this, maybe? Something like that? Anyway, that's that. I wonder if it'll work with this. That's an idea. Yeah. So there's that, I suppose. Yeah. Movies. I haven't really watched... I don't really watch any of the new movies. Trying to think. I mean, movies are nice. I like watching them. What is all this? This one's a bit cleaner. <laughs> well, there's that. We're still working on these. They're at the two-thirds mark. Almost. Almost two-thirds. I said it would be 80%, but that was too optimistic. I need to work this out. But we got the momentum back, so it should go a lot faster. Which I said last week. Rambling. Let's loosen up a little bit. Change the music here. So what are your favorite movies? Dare I ask? Let's see. We'll go back to what we were working on. Pepsi, Coke, or water? Hmm. <laughs> Well, I drink Coke usually, but the thing is, there's too much sugar in that stuff. Like, once every other day is more than enough, so I kind of avoid that kind of stuff. So water, I suppose. I haven't drank a whole lot of Pepsi. If you were to set a Pepsi and a Coke in front of me, I'd pick the Pepsi because I just don't get access to that a lot. So that's the answer to that. Water it is. I have a monster in front of me right now, though. One monster lasts a while for me. Just spread it out over a while. And it's not so unhealthy. So, problem we have here... This intersects the back, not the side even though it's on the side. Strange what you can get away with with 2D. 
What even? It's like an escure, what do you call it? Optical illusion kind of thing. Weird. Guess we just have to make it up. And I suppose, I'm wondering. Asking some interesting questions. Am I? Man. I don't know. Trying to think. Cause I don't do a whole lot of that apparently. Sometimes you have those days where you just can't really think. Like you want to think but you can't force it. Why is that? Is it a physical thing? You can move fast, but can you think fast? Not really. I'm trying to. So, I was thinking before, not right now, but I'm starting to think I have ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, because I cannot focus on modeling unless it's moving really, really fast, because I treat it like a game, kind of like. You're testing your skills, kind of. So I don't know if that's like normal to some people or to everyone. Maybe it's like a psychological, everyone's kind of doing it. Or if it actually is a real condition that I have, I'm not sure. It's good to think about this stuff because how can I counteract it? So I guess if I'm going to be honest about that question, it's not water, Coke, or Pepsi, it is monster. Because that's what I have in front of me right now, if we're going to be honest. Avatar, Astro, Matrix. Oh yeah! Pacific Rim is good. Avatar is good. Haven't heard of Tenet at Astro. I'll have to look those up. Matrix is a classic. Yeah, those are good picks. I should have picked those. Avatar is great. Pacific Rim, uh, to be honest, I didn't really like the way a lot of things were presented. Like, the physics are like so off. It's just a little too unbelievable for me. Like how he pulls out a sword only after everything he used a boat on him and stuff like that. Which is still cool as F though. Or how he like took him into the atmosphere in like, what, a minute? Then he's falling for like several minutes. It's like, eh, okay. But yeah, it's still good. The new ones aren't so good. New ones are like, they were bad, they were cringy, I hate- ugh! Like that's the reason I don't watch Transformers is for that kind of stuff. Yeah, the new Pacific Rims really hurt me person on a personal level. The first one was good though. 
New ones are just Power Rangers. Matrix was always good. I mean, the premise is kind of uh, weird. Kind of this new age religious kind of stuff. But it was still good. I dig it. Avatar. I liked. It was alright. The story was kind of bleh. Oh no, the bad guys are the people that are like stereotypically bad. Not a whole lot of story element there. But the visual effects were, out of, were really, really good. And I hope to do the same someday. Just splitting these off at the slow way. Gives you time to think. That's a plus about using SketchUp is people... I mean, people would say it's kind of slow, but I think that's like good because then you can stop and think about the design. You heard that they actually Netflix anime? Oh. Well, I have mixed feelings on that. I can't imagine it being good. I mean, you never know, but... A Netflix anime adaptation? I don't have high hopes for that. To be honest. I mean, it would be cool if they pulled it off. Interesting. What isn't a Netflix adaptation at this point? Everything is adapted to Netflix. Adapted, not adapted. What the heck? Hold on. This seems to be like this. Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about that. I mean, I wish they would like do it like in a more realistic way, like. And I'm never planning to. Hey, <laughs> me either. Well, I mean, I might look at it, but I'm never gonna like get into it probably. Which, to be honest, I don't have Netflix access right up at this point. So I may never actually. Yeah, I can't expect it to be good. And if you're gonna do follow me like this, you have to do like this. I wish they would just do it in a more realistic way. Because Mecha nowadays is all like the power of friendship! Then they move in a kind of a Weibo kind of way. Like they just move way too fast. I wish they would have like a Mecha that was realistic. Like the way they move, the physics involved in it. Like they can do funny things like jumping around and like and just being goofy, but I wish they would just do it in a way that was believable. What happened here? I know what happened. That's what I'm trying to strive for for my own things. It's like, make it believable. 
the physics don't have to be like perfect. It doesn't have to match real world stuff. You can have super strong materials and all that stuff. Like it would be kind of lame if it was a mecha where it was just basically walking tanks with ATGMs. I'd just be kind of whatever. Like something that was like semi-realistic. That would be nice. But then yeah, anime adaptation, I can't expect that to be realistic. Oh no sir. Oh yeah. Makes me wonder why is there no battle tick style? Like, are there? There should be somewhere. Like why hasn't Hollywood latched onto that yet? The demand is there, I think. People like Mad Max, they like Max. I don't see a problem with it. Why isn't there more Battletech style Hollywood movies? Because they'd mess it up probably? I don't know. Now that you mention it, yeah, what the heck? Where is it? Where's our Battletech movie? Maybe they just don't have the rights to it? Well, actually, actually, let me backtrack on that. Maybe we don't need one because they would ruin it, probably. They'd ruin a lot of things. We'd just end up being like Transformers, terrible story, bad actors. It'd be just bad. They'd, ju they'd probably ruin Battletech. I guess we can count our lucky stars that they're not. I mean, it is kind of lame that they're... Wish there was. Or even just like a Battletech anime or something like that. That'd be interesting. Robotech was nice. Yeah, like I like to watch anime little bits of it, like not the whole thing. Where the mechs are actually moving around realistically. That's really cool to watch. Like there was one clip where there's these realistic mechs and they're shooting at each other. And sure enough, this one with a sword pops up and that uses the power of friendship to kill them all. It's like, come on. We could do more flashy stuff with Gundam and Humanoid, it's easier to produce because they just have to do mocap for the rigs. True. Yeah, because making a battle tech movie would take actual skill. I mean, no, I'm not being kind of mean. I mean, it would just be cheaper. It would just be harder is all. Yeah, they take the path. I wouldn't say least resistance. As in one that's more... Less risk. A battle tech would be kind of risky. Maybe that's why. Yeah, human noise is a lot easier. Like, that's, that's not something they know they can do. They've proven it with Transformers and all that stuff. Hold on. Which is... whatever. We need more non-humanoid stuff. I'm sure when we have the tools to do that more efficiently, maybe they might consider it? I wouldn't even say tools, just the talent. Which I don't intend, expect to happen. At least not in Hollywood. I don't trust Hollywood at all, actually. If we're going to have a Battletech movie, it'd probably be an indie thing. I mean, 
A lot of people have been doing that on YouTube. They do some little battle tech animations. They're nice. It's just missing that AAA feel. Even Mech Warrior 5 was kind of a little bit scruffy on the surface, kind of. The new battle tech game. Not sure why. Like some of the, uh, like the mech skins are like so dirty, like, make a nice texture, man. Sure, they're supposed to be like war torn machines, but at least make them look nice. I don't have to be like flashy or anything. Not sure. I've just been on autopilot for the last however long. Just randomly making stuff. So cool if there would be more realistic 3D damage. Imagine Pixar are polished, but the character isn't cartoony. Yeah. That'd be nice. There are a few like indie projects around that are kinda like that. Which is nice, but they're like really short though. I'm not sure why they don't do realism. Maybe because it's not Maybe because people get scared by it? I don't know. Like the common folk that are into... I don't know. I wouldn't even say that. Like, I don't understand. Maybe it's just the budget. Like, they can get away with cartoony stuff. Realistic stuff. Maybe more expensive? Which is... Maybe it's because the CGI isn't quite there yet, because with a, something like a Transformer, the, the Uncanny Valley kind of takes a part in it, like, you already know it's kind of CGI, but there's a suspension of disbelief because it is halfway's cartoonity. Cartoony? But detailed enough that you can actually get into it. While if it was pure realism, that Uncanny Valley would get in the way, and people would say it's not actually real. Netflix Love Death Robots. Oh yeah! That's the good stuff. Are you sure though? Because the ones I saw on that were actually pretty cartoony. Can't remember if there was any actual realistic ones. There was. A few of them. But I didn't see any mechs in them. Unless I'm not remembering correctly. Like, I wonder, I wish there was like a, yeah, triple A. I love Death and Robots of a Battletech something. That'd be nice. That would be legit. Are they making a new one? I only saw the first ones. Are they in the new ones? I heard they're making a second batch. Oh, that is already out. I haven't seen it. Love, death, and robots. Yeah, that was really good stuff. 
It should just be like all the time. I should keep making love to put us forever. Look at animation and assets. Ah. I'll have to relook that. I know one of them was a space station kind of thing. Which that was pretty cool. Don't quite remember the other one. I think it was like a fight. Those are the two ones that come to mind. I'll have to look at those again. Yeah, it's kind of difficult making realistic things. Like, even just recently, I have been struggling with that. I figured out that it's not as easy as it seems. Because realism kind of goes against your modeling practices. Because whenever I model things, it kind of defaults into certain things. It just ends up being in a certain way. Which, for me, is kind of subliminal because I'm not working off of concept art which I suppose is a personal problem but yeah like everything I make ends up being cartoony and I'm kind of I was trying to figure out why that happens like for example this one like I wanted to be realistic this one was supposed to be realistic but then it ended up not being realistic this is chunky and cartoony and blocky and just too cartoony. Everything I've made for Roger Robots was too cartoony. This is like a Bionicle, basically. That's a cartoon. This is what you find in a Power of Friendship anime. This ain't realistic. I was trying to think, why? Why is it like that? So, I started to think, it's because of the industrial process. Like, none of these have an industrial process. They're not made. They're not thought of when whenever you're designing them. They're just kind of random, and they're based off of random extrusions. Which, in essence, is going to end up with that same cross-section. Square, blocky, short. That's just the art style. So if you're not actually going for an art style, they end up being cartoony. That's just me. Like, That's not a global thing, that's a subjective thing. So what has to happen to make realistic mechs is to have concept art beforehand and with industrial processes in mind like how would they make such and such and look at real world examples most of the real world things have struts and they're covered in panels and these panels are not square they're usually like rounded and more stringy kind of not like monolithic because all these things are monolithic one solid chunk Normally this would be like a framework covered in pieces, not a solid object. And yes, my uncles are great though. Heck yeah. But here's a thing. Here's a problem. Or not necessarily a problem, but an observation I just made like a week ago. Something very, very interesting. Let's see if I can find it. Sitting around here somewhere. Oh, here we go. So, okay, here's a Bionicle. I got this guy like half a year ago because I always wanted one. That one in particular. Awesome. Love it. At the very same time, I made this mech model. If I can pull it up here. This one. This was at this, almost the same time I got this guy. But now that I'm looking at it, there's a... What, what's going on here? They look exactly the same. What even? That's... That's all subliminal. That wasn't on purpose. They're the same. They've got the thing. They've got the mask. 
They've got the, that there. They've got these. They've got the claws. What the heck? They've got the double joints. They've got the feet. They've got the desert motif. They've got everything. They even got this. What does that mean? That was completely by accident. Very strange. What does it mean? So there's that. I think it's all subliminal. When you're working, not working off the source material, that's how it ends up. Hmm. Very, very interesting. I need to branch out a little bit more. I need to make concept art before I make models. Now that's why my things are ending up cartoony. It's because I watch Toy Story. And whatever else, robots. The movie robots. That's where the art style is coming from. Great. So I am a slave to my own art style. That's not a good thing. We've got a lot of learning to do to break this cycle. What even is an art style at this point? What is creativity? What does it mean? I just like Bionicles, I guess. Because apparently that's all I can make. So yeah, I don't know... Maybe I'm just not creative? I mean, I know I am, but... Maybe that's the reason why it looks like things I've encountered. Because what is creativity? It's just bashing things that exist together. Like, I didn't invent a gun. I didn't invent a cannon. I didn't invent this. And yet, no, nothing else exists in real life like it. Specifically. In a grand sort of scene, yes. A lot of guns exist. Makes you think. Okay. I don't think creativity is an actual thing. It's just borrowing from real life. That's what we call realism. Things that look like real life. Maybe that's why my things don't end up being realistic. It's because they exist in some other world. Where no set laws exist on how to manufacture these objects. And that's why they end up as being monolithic chunks. And I don't even think that's a SketchUp thing at this point. That's a personal problem. We'll get there. Lego properly rebooted. Yes. Like, I like the first ones. The second ones are like, eh, and then the rest of the blah blah blah. I kind of left it alone after the first set. They need, like, good ones. Nice ones. Ones that aren't too complicated. Like, the original ones were nice. The OGs. The ones after that were a little too complicated. Simplicity is best sometimes. And yeah, they need to make, like, 
more animations. Like, the animations they made for those ones are really good. Which I haven't seen a whole lot of them, but I need to do that. Why can't people make nice things? It's not that difficult, people. Especially when you have so much talent to choose from. Okay, I lied. Don't quote me on that. I struggle. I know the struggle. But I mean, the world's a very big place. You'd think something nice would come out of that. Makes you wonder. What are you doing, Lego? What are you doing, Hollywood? And can I have this echo chamber? They just keep copying themselves. Which I do too. What does it mean? I need to, like, look it up. I'm pretty sure these answers exist somewhere on the internet. Internet's a great place to figure things out. Yeah, we need a Bionicle reboot. We need a Battletech something. We need all this good stuff. That's what we need, anyway. All I can offer is something new. But it'll be nice. And I bet... 30 years from now, people were saying, We need a... Reboot of this guy's stuff. It'll be my stuff. It's nice, it's fun to think about, but... You never know. Hopefully. Dream big. Someday. It'll be a little bit before we get there, though. There's just so many reboots. People, they get wrong. Like, how do they get reboots so wrong sometimes? I'm looking at you, Disney. Like, they like, completely ignore the source material. Why? Do they like, not know what... Or are they just digging up old IPs just to make money off of them? What does that even mean? nothing sacred. That's why I'm kind of on edge. Like, if EA approaches me or something, if the game gets big, when the game gets big, and big IPs come after me, I don't know. I'll probably, like, kind of avoid it. Because I know what they do to games. I don't want to be a... I don't want to sell out to the big guy. I'm not money motivated. We'll see. We'll burn that bridge when we get there. And yeah, I don't trust reboots. Every time I see a reboot, I kind of cringe. It's like, ugh, they're just going to ruin another franchise. Like anyone in general, not just Disney. Just cash in on that nostalgia. I mean, admittedly, if they did Bionicle, I'd be like, ooh. It all depends if they do it right. Usually they don't. So 
reboots. Darn reboots. Reminds me of a show that used to be called Reboot. It was in the 90s. I vaguely remember it. It was CG animated. Strong streak of really getting into a franchise that has either no death support or just no future installments plan on it in the work. Yes. I know, like, why? How did they do that? It's sad. All the good stuff existed back then. I don't know what the deal is. Like, it's not supposed to be that way. I mean, if something's good, it should keep going. Why do people just pick abandoned stuff? Which you see that a lot everywhere. Little stuff, big stuff everywhere. People just make a really nice thing and then they just leave it. And things like are really detached by time, just how the internet is. Like, you can look up videos on YouTube 11 years old and just be okay with it. That's how YouTube is. Same with the franchises, everything's like time disconnected. You can just finally figure something out, see something, and it's already long gone, long dead. That's just how it is. Now, in this new age of communication, everything is disjointed by time. Back in the day, there would be a physical thing like your paper degrades over time, and then that, through the passage of time, becomes unreadable. Nowadays, everything is immortalized on the internet. But, which actually, that's what they say with advanced civilizations as well. If we were to look for aliens out there in the cosmos, most of the ones we'd find have been already been dead for a long time. There's a time disconnect. It's not a matter of finding life, it's a matter of finding life when it's alive. Which is really tough to do. Time is weird. Okay, first of all, this has to be bigger. Not quite that. Yeah, right when you get into something, oh, it's dead. Hope The problem is, this is supposed to lean on this, but this is angled upwards, not downwards. So that would mean this goes up. But we don't want that for a default pose, so we have to move it like this. Eh, close enough. And then that development hell kind of stuff. Where they say they're going to do something and they just kind of sit on it. Kind of aggravating sometimes. But then I think about it and that's exactly what I do sometimes. There's no excuses for it, but that's what I do. So it leads to a little bit of understanding, but at the same time it's like... Come on. You're all are pros. What even is a, the word pro mean anymore? A person that accepts monet, monetization for their vocation? No different from an average person. It is kind of depressing sometimes.
Let me think if I can think of any examples. Can't really think of any. There was one game I was playing. Actually, there's a lot of games on Steam where they just in a perpetual... What do you call it? Early access? Like, perpetually. They stay in early access. Why? Why is that? Don't you guys have a plan? Like, Space Engineers I was playing. That's been in early access for ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And, like, a year ago, they're like, Hey, it's out of early access. And, like, nothing changed. I was like, okay. But, nah. Space Engineers is still good, though. What education do I have? I barely passed high school and failed online college twice in the first week. If they call that education. So yeah, I'm not a good student. Bad student. Very bad. Barely passed college. I mean, barely passed high school. I tried online college for an art. Art? One week is all it took. Then I was off. Couldn't do it. I tried. I did try. Could not do it. So, no education, basically. None. Nothing. I'm starting to think maybe that's due to my attention deficit disorder. I'm starting to think. Maybe that's what's happened. Because I just cannot focus on their stuff. I could now. Now I can. If I were to enter college, I would be able to do it right now. But this is a skill I only learned a few years ago. So no. No education. Everything is by trial and error. My own little vacuum, kinda. That's why I'm using SketchUp, because it was easy to pick up. But now that I have the attention span to work on other things, I could change, but I'm too far in. Let's see, I got a new plugin for tubes. Curves, create group, no. Each tube is a group, no. Precision, 24. That's a tiny little tube. I wish there was like a preview. Good enough. Yeah, no, no education. I really wish I did. Play that toss. Space Engineers! Well, I mean, I used to play it. Not recently. It's still fun, though. Yeah, my brother and I, we have our server. Right now, we're playing Satisfactory. That's what's got his attention. Space Engineers is good. In a controlled environment. As long as you have your own server, kind of. Because whenever you lose your ship to lag or something, it's like you just bring it back. Official servers are a bit too stressful sometimes. And... I don't know if I have any pictures of my ships. Not on hand. They're kind of ugly little yellow things. Oh, I have a picture of what they kind of look like. This is, okay, if you can imagine what the ships look like in Space Engineers, this is what mine looked like. Long, yellow, banana phone. It's a spaceship banana. Yeah. Someday we'll make stuff like this. Higher quality. That's the good stuff. Yeah, my ships are yellow usually. 
combat update a few hours ago. Ooh! Interesting. I'll look that over. Yeah, I was watching a video a few days ago. They are actually doing like a contest where they fight each other. Like an actual thing where they're shooting at each other and stuff. It actually looked really good. Like it's optimized, it was moving smoothly. Interesting. Might have to give it a try again. I mean, we're still kind of stuck in Valheim right now, though. Convince my buddies. Because I really don't play these kind of games alone anymore. Because I, I get too anxious. It's like, I should be working on something right now. So I only play those games whenever I'm with somebody. Oh well, yeah, interesting. I mean, I still don't trust Keen, but that's an interesting that they would do that. This has to go down. Puts it along. Trying to think. Always trying to think. I don't think thinking exists. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. Them and their rail guns and their lasers and their. Back in my day, it was a Gatling turret or a missile turret. That's all you got. Unless you got, like, the big Bertha mod. Then you get the good guns. I like big guns. If I'm gonna make a ship, it has to be a glass cannon. It's just how I do. And there's a lot of wads people make. It's like a wad covered in guns. It's like, ew. Something special happens right here. Something very special. This. Let's. That will see. Nah, we'll Price DLCs. Yeah, I don't I don't trust Kane, not at all. That's actually another reason why I don't play the game alone. I just don't trust him. Like as soon as I saw they were putting in DLC, right after they announced the game was finished and nothing really changed, I was like, wow. But I had already had those convictions because I was already kind of on that train because whenever they put in planets, they put it in medieval engineers and they were just trying to make the game more modable, which to me as a dev is like, I know what you're doing there. You guys are disorganized. Every bug you fix makes a new bug. And space engineers is so broken at a fundamental level. Like, optimization-wise. But still. Still really good, though. Like, it's impressive what it can do. So I don't hold that against them. And it's still good. 
I just don't trust their business practices. I would recommend the game. I wouldn't recommend the company. Well, that's for most things. That's for everything, actually. Put this circle back to 32. Yeah, I, I picked up Medieval Engineers. I played it for three hours, and I was like, can't get a refund now. Didn't like it. So don't do that. We'll listen to this one a lot. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Why do companies always do that? Kind of throw the player under the bus, kind of stuff. It's all about the money, I suppose. She mentioned that it's a really, really small update. They just added a pistol and RPG plus a couple blocks because they didn't decide to do the combat update in most parts. Oh lord. Yep indeed. I see how it is, Keen. They probably will. Mo monetize this in some way. I don't know where they're putting the money. Like, they're successful. What are they doing? Their little pet projects or something? I don't know. I mean, it is nice. But that's kind of overdue. Like, how long has the game been out before they've actually added something else? That's been a while. And this is like small stuff, like an RPG and a pistol after how many years? And that's small stuff. Look for some more music. Here we go. Like, I don't even know with those people. Whenever I make my game, it'll have free DLC. At least at first. I do plan on one being paid, but it'll be good though. Like, it won't be up in your face kind of. I mean, what does that even mean? Like, what? An RPG? It's been a. It should have been day one kind of stuff. Oh well. Well, not really. It's kind of optional. I expect as much. Whenever you head up there, I was like, oh boy, are there. Are there railguns now? Are there lasers? We have barely progressed past sticks and stones. We've got RPGs. And pistols, I guess. What more do you want? A shotgun? Well, that would be too advanced. In my space game? I like to sound like from the dips. Brother Depths keeps adding things no one asked for? Making it more complicated? It's a really tricky subject. Yeah. I mean, people that make games should be... Yeah, they need to have financial, but... It is tricky. Where do you draw the line? What is good DLC and what is bad DLC? Oh, we broke our thing.
Not sure. What is good DLC? What is bad DLC? I do know EA is not good at that. For nasty loot boxes. Well, I mean, they fixed it, I think. Something like that. Yeah, but Keen, I don't trust Keen about that. I mean, whenever I was playing Titanfall, the game was only like a game amount of money, very cheap, but then the cosmetics you buy for like five bucks. I felt that was worth it. Like I didn't really care about that. Ah, there's a tricky subject. There is the tricky subject right there. What's up? Die, what's up? Good to see ya. Let's see. Something like that. Close. Not quite. What's going on? Quick visit for dinner. Ah, oh, thanks for popping in. Yeah, very good. Yeah, have a good one. Have a good dinner. Something like that. I think we might just wind down a little bit. I mean, has it gone over the hour? I said last stream I was only going to be one hour. Not great, not terrible. It'll get there. Looks close. If we're working faster, we can make this a lot faster. That's the thing about having concepts. You have to force yourself to make certain things. All right, I guess we'll wind down a little bit. Wind down on what, I wonder? Yeah, I guess, let's see. Yeah, whenever game monetization, I don't plan on having cosmetics in the game that you can buy. You grind for the cosmetics and you're good. The DLC will be free, up to a point, whenever the game is completely completed. This is the customer, they show you the cosmetics, show you the price, extra decision, it goes straight to the point, no middleman. Yeah, that's how it should be. That's, yeah, now that you mention it, maybe that's why I didn't have qualms with it. Like, I don't want loot boxes, I want to have, like, right then in there, that's the price, that's the thing you're buying, that's what you're getting, that's what you want. I had no qualms against it. Same with Warframe. I would like pick out a cosmetic, I'd buy it, and you're good. And that's all you needed, like one. You only need one. Here we go. 
Eh. Don't want these dudes. Don't want them. And that's how it should be. Hi, Blanky. Oh, hello, hello, Windy 3D. What's going on? You can extract all that from those scribbles. Scribbles they are. They're just scribbles. Like, I make a tiny little sketch in the course of a half an hour, and then I spend several hours working on it, modeling it. Like, let me see if I can find... I had another little sketch. I don't know if I can find it. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to find it. I will spend 10 seconds looking quick. Count it. 1, 1,000. 2, 1,000. I did. I put 1,000 hours in. I put my time in. I haven't picked it up in a few years. Kind of left it alone. Got out of the rat race, as it were. It was nice. I liked it. It was a good game. Put my 1,000 hours in. Can't find it. I usually start with a sketch, but I can't find it. Like, for example, I'll just throw this down right here. Two seconds. Like, whenever I made that spaceship. Like, that whole model was a sketch that took five minutes to draw. That was a five minute sketch, that one. And all these scribbles. That was 15, half an hour, maybe. And it takes forever to make. And there was another one I had models. Yeah, and just you have to make sense of it. Whenever you're the one that drew it, it makes more sense because you know a lot of this is just random, so it kind of follows your art style. I got this tank. And there's a sketch for that one. Ah, wow, where'd he go? I said I would be organized by the next stream. I, apparently I lied again. I do a lot of lying. I have this dumb tank. seconds. Darn it. Here we go. What size the StarCraft Terran Army? Hey, RTSs are good. StarCraft. Yeah, I haven't played a lot of StarCraft. I'm more of a sub -kind, sub Supreme Commander kind of guy. Oh yeah, StarCraft is good. This is the sketch for this one. Ugly sketch ends up being a tank. They all start off with sketches usually. And then you kind of extrapolate the details from it. Like, I think the reason why they end up being so complicated. Here, let me open. Okay, so the way I model is very random. Like, Random extrusion, random extrusion. You make a mess, right? With these, they give a seed. Like, this is the thing you're going for. So whenever you're going for something, then you can extrapolate what needs to happen. Very rough, abstract concepts. Like that. Like, it doesn't even have to match. Like, if we put this up against here, it wouldn't really match. This does not match that. That does not match that. Kind of. I don't know. I can't. I tried to explain it. I can't quite explain it. That is interesting. Yeah, I'm more of a Supreme Commander kind of guy. Trying to find. Oh, I know. You know what we should make next? This is what we should make next. Oh yeah, that's what we need to make. 
This building right here. I drew this a while ago. That'd be fun. I think that should be our next project. Yeah. That has a lot of morphology in there. That's what we shall do next. Just for fun. Okay, back to what I was doing. So the problem here lies. I see, I see, said the blind man. Yeah, whatever what other RTSs do I like? Command and Conquer is pretty good. I played that a lot back in the day. Command and Conquer Generals. That was the good stuff. Yeah, and I tried Supreme Commander 2, but I wasn't convinced. It doesn't have the same feel as the first one. Yeah, I looked at StarCraft. It is interesting. Um, it's not really a game I'd play, though. It's a little too fast-paced. I'm a bit of a slow person, slow-minded individual. Not intelligent. Those StarCraft people are very smart. It's like, wow, how do they do that? Impressive. Stronghold Crusader was nice, too. That's what really got me into RTSs. Oops. We just needed to go inward. I think the game... Yeah, the game will have RTS elements in it. They won't be like hardcore moving things around constantly kind of thing. You just tell people to go in a certain direction and they'll just kind of figure it out from there. A lot of tests we'll have to do with that before we actually know what direction it needs to go. <laughs> ah, oh man. It would do that to people. It does look like one of those kind of games. Titanfall almost kind of makes you do that sometimes. Well, I got a control on it now. It's good. It's tough. A little too hardcore for me. Yeah, I prefer the... Yeah, those hardcore ones, they're too tough. Yeah, that's kind of the reason I'm not really playing type all right now. It's a little too hardcore. Like, whenever I get, I'm high up on monster energy. It's like, yes, MLG weed hacks, and then go in there and kill everybody. But then, whenever I'm just kind of whatever, you have to, you have to, you have to really get into it. You can't just pick it up and say, I'm gonna kill some people casually. There is no casual, there is no casual gameplay in PvP ever. It's either you're facing the AI or you're not casual. PvP in itself is hardcore. And yeah, that's kind of the reason why we play Supreme Commander a lot, because we're just facing the AI. It's relaxing. Ah, I am using Unreal Engine 4. Yeah, Unreal Engine. It'll have nice graphics. I won't be focusing on the graphics like a lot though. Gameplay has to come first. But the cool thing about Unreal is you can just drop things in and it looks good automatically. Kinda. Very good. The reason I'm using Unreal is because it has scripting, nodular network kind of stuff where you don't actually have to code. Because I'm a more of a visual kind of guy. But I know enough about vector math and 3D extrapolation and stuff that I can make coding through the nodular networks. Blueprints, as it were. So I can do that. The thing with that is it's not properly optimized, kind of. Like it's snippets of C++ code that do stuff. 
they're not necessarily the code themselves. So kind of an optimization bottleneck there, which is fine. They're new today, but to tell you the truth, graphics looks better. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. If you're gonna ask for my opinion, here's my opinion. Don't be offended by it. I hate Unity. It's just I, I always hate it at first sight. As soon as I saw it, I was like, ugh, what is this? Not to say that Unity makes bad games. It's, it's really good. It makes people to make some awesome stuff with it. It just wasn't for me. It's, I just didn't like the look of it. Graphics are not nice. So, I mean, Unreal is nice. Like, I won't, like, be a fanboy over it. I'll be like, Unreal is amazing. I won't do that. But I do know I don't like Unity. I mean, not picking sides, but... Unity's still good, though. In another life, if I knew how to code properly, I might pick Unity. But I do not, so there's that. Hold on. Yeah, but I like Unity. I mean, that's good. That's the cool thing about Unreal. You just drop it in and you're good. As long as you know how to make texture maps and all that stuff, which I only just recently learned. Masha Robots taught me that. Learn by doing kind of stuff. Since you don't actually have... I mean, I don't have any education in that field, so you gotta make do with what you got. And it just has to be good enough. If it runs, and it's fun, and it looks okay, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be AAA, it doesn't have to be have thousands of things on screen at the same time. You saw that video for next one, really. They can use unlimited geometry. Well, okay, so. The thing with that. This music, though. A little too happening. Well, the thing with that is. That only works with. Okay, this music's getting on my. Kind of messed me up. Here we go. So, the thing with that. That only works for rocks and stuff. They say unlimited geometry because it has a special optimization algorithm for optimizing smooth geometry. Things that can be like messed up, triangulated on the fly. Because their in-game thing for making low poly meshes. Like for example, let's do something. Let's say we tessellated this kind. Say you have this rock. What it does is it power poly reduces this stuff. Where am I? There we go. The thing is, now that it's Unreal Engine 5, it'll probably reduce on the fly. Like, it'll do auto LODs. But the problem with that is... That won't really work for things like this. Because whenever you poly reduce something like this... This is what you get. We can make it do it. Like it doesn't do it properly. This is what it's like. It looks a little bit kind of like it, but then you end up with stuff like this and stuff. So that's what's going to happen with that. It only works for high, super detailed stuff. And to be honest, this looks super high detailed, but it is not actually. It is not super high detailed. It's actually very low poly. There's not a whole lot of polygons going on here. Like it's complex. It's not complicated, it's complex. There's a difference. I mean, complicated is like that. Complex is a lot of interconnected pieces. So it will not benefit me. This unlimited geometry buzzword stuff. Unfortunately. It is cool though. Because you can put in a lot of rocks. And a lot of trees. And a lot of cool stuff. And not have to worry about the performance. Which is still very good in a way. How does topology work? 
Hmm. I'm not sure. All I know, I mean, this is what I've just, from what I've seen, I don't know what's going on under the hood. Is this an N-Gon thing? Like, these are not actually triangulated? They might be, I'm not sure. I think what it takes is these vertices that are uh, coplanar and puts a face between them. I'm not sure how it renders that. Maybe it splits it up as triangles? Because this is not triangular geometry. Maybe it kind of parses it out. Everything's n-gons. The thing is, if you export it, it'll all be triangles again. So just a lot of n-gons, kind of. Coplanar n-gons. Like, you can't have non-coplanar stuff. Like, this right here. It looks co like if you've made it kind of like, almost like this. It may seem like this is one face, but in reality, it is split like that. SketchUp's kind of weird sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the... It might work in other instances. Like, they might be able to get away with interesting effects. I don't think it'll work on inorganic stuff like this, though. So I, I don't... I don't have high hopes for it. It's nice. I mean, if I had trees and rocks and stuff. And a demo, yeah, it was just trees and rocks. And the thing is, I don't even think it really counts as Unreal Engine 5, per se. Unless they rework the whole UI. Because if I open up Unreal Engine 5, and the UI is the same as Unreal Engine 4, then you'll know that it's fake. The UI has to change. That's all I'm concerned about. If the UI changes, then I'll say, hey, this is pretty good. Because right now, to me, it just seems like kind of like a buzz thing. It could just be another Unreal Engine 4 update. But where, they, where do they draw the line? That's the question. So I don't hold it against them. As long as they're not charging for it. They can call it whatever they want. Who knows? Maybe there's a lot of cool, interesting things in there that really add, it, add to the experience. We'll see, because the in infinite polygon stuff... You could have infinite polygons anywhere. A lot of things already support that. It's not necessarily infinite, it's just optimization. Sports quads and SketchUp uses extension quad-based tools. Exporter which doesn't triangulate faces. Yes, indeed! That's a nice script. pretty cool. Like, you can have something triangulated. Like, these are triangles. Use quad tools. There's a tool right here. Let's see. You can triangulate all this. And now there's this in there. Like, before it wasn't there. Now it is. You can triangulate it. And you can untriangulate it. There we go. So yeah, there's nice scripts in there. Problem is, if you want to do that... Now, if you ever encounter this problem where you can't push-pull something, it's because something's in the way. Like that right there. You have to get rid of it. Yeah, there's nice scripts. The collapse things into quads for export. Huh. Which I really don't have a use for. Like, people, whenever I'm watching them model, it's like they're doing it perfect in every way. Everything is quads, everything is... like, good topology. Which, to be honest, I never learned. Because I never went to school for it. But I'm starting to think you just don't need it. You don't need good topology. I mean, if you can make it work, you can make it work. If you were working for someone, yeah, you'd have to know topology. But if you're working for yourself, it's okay. No one cares. End product is all that matters. So don't worry about topology too much. Let's see. At least that's my opinion. I'm probably there's a lot of pro pros out there that are rolling around like, why would you say that? 
I am no pro. Take my advice with a grain of salt. What we got? What's here? I said we were gonna wind down. I guess that never happened. Do the thing. Like that. Excuse me. Definitely did good talk about. Ha! Hmm. Interesting. Elaborate. Animation speed spotology is like magic. Hey! I did that too. I was trying to anyway. Didn't quite work for me. I mean, it did, but it didn't really work properly. Okay, since we're on this tangent. I guess it's time for the big reveal. What do the main characters look like? Everyone's going to have one massive cringe. Here we go. These are the main characters. This is ZBrush morphology here. This is how I exported it. It's not quite good enough though. I guess that's not really... It's not quite there yet. Auto remesher, yeah. Auto remesher helps. It works. I'm not quite convinced though. Like right here, like what is all this? Unnecessary geometry here. Some. You're gonna have to do this manually, kinda. So I, I was about to do this in SketchUp, but I was like, no way, not again. I don't do this anymore, not in SketchUp. It's a can of worms. Manual topology. That's another lesson I have to learn. We'll get there. Something like that. And yeah, I kind of avoid showing off the creatures in this. Those are the actual main characters, but I haven't really... We got it. Do the thing. Because they're not quite where they need to be just yet. Under test for organic. Tech. Wait, wasn't the main characters robotic? Yes! Oh, there's all else? Look at main characters. It'll be half and half, kinda. You can choose your faction. There'll be one side and the other side. One side will have. Let me see if I can find an example. Yeah, one side will be these guys. Like, you can choose the robots that look like this. You can choose the robots that look like... Let's see if I can find it. I think they're old. I don't have many examples of it. I mean, some of them will look kind of like this, too. Like, kind of human-like. Not like this, though. They won't have this geometry. It'll be more like that, kind of. This is an older model. You will be able to choose the robots. But yeah, the creatures are the other side. They're the other ones. There's three factions. I can't find the third one. Because they're organic, kind of. Kind of 
I like that. Edgy. Yeah, that's one faction. The robots. Can't seem to find... Well, the other ones are basically the robots, except with more smooth forms. Oh, here we go. I know where it is. I said I would be organized. I lied. Again and again and again. Here we go. The other ones are more animalistic, kind of, and smoother. This is the third faction. Each will have different play styles. One, these ones will just kind of run around and do their own thing. The other ones, the robots will like be for world domination, I guess. And the actual creatures are like defensive, defending against other ones. That's the idea anyway. Yeah, I really kind of don't like showing the creatures because I know it kind of it'll divide the fan base. Like, there was no way around it at all. There was no way around it because they they these ones needed to exist because if everything was robotic, it would be, lack a certain quality. Because this is an RPG, this is not an arcadey kind of thing. This is an actual role-playing game. And the thing is, if all you can choose is a robot. There'll be lots of two robots to choose from, but if you're just choosing a robot, there's it's missing a certain aspect. Like the actual storyline kind of revolves around these creatures. And there's a lot of story elements that like depend on it. That's why I kind of apprehensive because it's gonna be a sum of its parts, but this part right here, I don't like showing off. It'll be better than, a, it's, it'll be good though. Profile pick? Ah, yes. Kinda. Okay, let me find an example. I have pictures, let me see. Third faction will look like. Where is he? Here we go. Here we go. Kinda like that, kinda. People like that. Like they're smoother, they're robotic, but they're smooth. And they'll have very different forms. Like with the other robots, they're like really blocky kinda. And evil looking. These ones are just kinda smooth. Another one. Kinda like that. Not quite cartoony though. These are like car too cartoony for me. They'll look a lot more serious. This one's supposed to be like a bug. Yeah, just stuff like that. Kind of almost. There's a black clip in there. Okay, not like that. This is the other faction. If we're going to split it up, let's split it up like that. These two are from the other faction. Like they're grown, kind of. That's one, that's two. I guess we'll just make a pile of them. I'll just get into sketches. And that's what the creatures have, they have tanks. What else? Stuff like that. Here I have level. Here we go. Like that. That's all the robots. Yeah. So that'll be one faction. These are called the Shadows. They're not evil, but they're just kind of animalistic. And that's the third faction. 
These are the ones you choose when you just want to do your own thing. These ones are special, like no other one will be like you. Once you customize your character with the smooth armor, your character will be unique. Like no other character in the game will look like yours. With these ones, whenever you customize your character, kind of evil looking edgy things, you might see someone else that looks like you because you're grown out of the ground kind of. And that subset may be, exist somewhere else. It'll be explained, there's a big story behind it. And these ones run off of power directly, these are energy based. So whenever you customize your character, you can run around and just do whatever, because you're, you're immortal, basically. This one, these ones, they break apart very easily. That's who you're fighting. I mean, if you're joining, if you're with the, cre with the robots. And the thing is, the death mechanics will be very different between factions. Like with the creatures, if you die, then that's kind of it. That's all you get. You have to restart. As in, from a checkpoint or something. With these ones, if you die, who cares? You're expendable. You just possess the one next to you. And it just kind of goes like that. These ones are expendable. They run around and just die kind of stuff. These ones, they don't die. Like, ever. Like, you can get severely damaged and you're out of the battle, but you never actually die. These ones are different. And there'll be different game mechanics and just different play styles that adheres to different types of ways to do stuff. And there'll be politics, and there'll be resource acquisition, and they'll all play out differently depending on the faction you picked. If you pick the robots, you're just absorbing things from the ground and taking over things from other people. If you choose these ones, you do whatever the heck you want to. If you choose the creatures, you have to fight these creatures to get your power. That's called light score. And you will fight them. And there'll be a lot of them. So yeah. And the thing about those robots, they'll be huge. Absolutely huge. You'll we'll be fighting inside these robots sometimes, or inside. You'll we'll be working with them if you join them. Blah blah blah. Got off on a tangent. There's more to it. Quite a bit more to it. And you'll be able to customize your robot to be bipedal or quadrupedal or anything like that. At most of the, most of them, what hundred like ninety percent of them will be bipedal though. Like if you choose these kind of things, you kind of just possess them. They won't actually be your character. Your character will be bipedal. Your customizable character. So yeah, it'll be limited to bipedal, but you can possess the other ones if you're the robots anyway. The smooth ones are different. You have to be that one, if you are that one. I think that's all I got. Well, that's tangent over. That's one tangent. Anyway. Let's see, how long has it been? A little while. And that's why I was saying these ones right here are kind of the same faction. Because this is where they come from, right here. Yeah, this is where they come from. So, the downside to playing as the do whatever you want faction is no one trusts you, kind of. Like, with the creatures, you have a lot of people you can do. It's like an RTS, you can just tell them to do stuff, and you have politics. And you can order people around, and you have a lot of friends with these guys. Like you have a lot of friends, and you have tanks, and you have all that good stuff. Yes, indeed, I'm making it by myself for now. The idea is to make a prototype, a functional prototype that has all the mechanics in it, and then assemble a team afterwards once the concept is proven. So right now I am making it by myself. 
But yeah, and then the downside of playing that faction is yeah, you don't have units to control, you don't have map control, you don't have anything really. Because this will be an RPG, it will be a massive map that you do missions on. And being the other ones that do whatever the heck they want, it's just a different gameplay style. Here, let me see if I have... I have a setup for that, real quick. Go here, world building, gameplay. So yeah, that's difficulty as well. Like if you just want to mess around and be, do whatever the heck you want, then you choose that one. If you want to have an actual catered experience, you choose the creatures. If you want to be reckless, you just want to see things break, you want destruction, you'd pick the robots. And there's different gameplay balances. Like the creatures, you build bases. Well, I would I wouldn't say god. I would say demigod. Like, if someone pops you in the face with a 100 millimeter shell, you'd be out. Like, you wouldn't be dead, but you'd be out. Like, you can't die, but you can be, like, out of the. Can't really do it. Like you can't die, but there are things about it that get in the way. Let me see, export to the image. JPEG, switch this gameplay. Real quick, two seconds. Say this is because it's seen too much, but it's cool that you can help from that to the prototype. Well, it sounds complicated, but here's the thing. There we go. I know how much work it'll take, but once I get on it, I know how long it'll take, and I know it is possible. So here's it. Spectral is the third faction. Zeos are the creatures, shadows are the robots. The way the balance works out. Like, they're chaotic, basically. Shadows are neutral, Zeos are lawful. Lawful evil, lawful neutral, lawful good. We'll leave that there for a second. So, it is a lot of work, to be honest. But the thing is, the mechanics are like kind of, I wouldn't say complicated, like they won't be complicated to do, they'll be modularized, there's only a certain amount of, it's finite, like the tank can only have a certain amount of guns, a certain amount of aspects of it. And stuff like that, and once things get moving, they'll be moving fast, I hope. I don't know. I guess I'll just stop being defensive about it. It will take a while. You're right. What is that? But the thing is, the concept is iterated enough that it'll just plug in the wires basically. It'll happen. Oh yeah, so this is the base building. The prototype will focus on one aspect and one aspect only is the base building. Like you put your different modules in places. It'll be semi-procedural, so you don't actually have to build the base like straight up. Like you just put in certain functional components and it puts out the base out for you which I've done in the past so I know exactly how that'll go that won't be too difficult it'll be fun actually so this will be the base defense yeah the prototype will be base defense 
against a certain amount of robots. There'll be a large one, medium one, small one. That's it. That's how it's going to be in the prototype. Base building. Several tanks. The beast will be in it. The things that have to be tested are the large scale vehicle handling. Like how the player will interact with the vehicle while he's inside it. Because the physics of that right now are like you clip through it and stuff. So that's something that's to be iterated. Vehicles. We'll have just a few vehicles. They'll be customizable. The character will only be have three subsets. Three skins, basically. Are you coming to the faction? Balance them more. Oh, they'll be balanced. So, here's the thing. Alright. Trying to think. I keep saying, here's the thing. That's kind of annoying. Okay. Balance. Oh, yeah. The way balance works in this game. It's on a grander scale. Like, in a moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, there is no balance. The way it works. Here's how the concept works. Let's say this is... a shadow, and this is a zero. The do-whatever faction. Ah. We'll factor them as in as well. So, the way the ba balance works. These robots get very big. And there's a lot of them. The Zeos, there's a lot of Zeos, but not quite as much. But they have vehicles. And these vehicles are very strong. Like, these aren't human vehicles. These have big guns on them. Like, very big. Things will be very destructive. Their tanks are huge. And the thing is, they have almost unlimited resources, kind of. But you have to go out and get them. The way it works is... The planet is a construct that runs off of something called Spectra. And this spectra is mined from the ground. And it's unlimited in quantity. The more this brought up to the surface, the more these grow. The robots. The shadows, basically. That's why they're called shadows. And the thing is, the only way it can be brought to the surface is by the Zeos. From power wells. Like they mine it for their machines. Once they have it in their machines, it kind of radiates over throughout the planet, and these grow out of the ground. So the more machines you have, the more robots there are. If you have no machines, there are no robots. And that's how the gameplay is dynamic. The way it's balanced is the gameplay modifies itself based on your actions. Like, the more active stance you take, the more difficult it gets. Like, if you just want to be casual, you can not do anything, not make tanks, build your house, Nothing happens. The robots don't show up. Only little ones show up. And they can be tamed. Like, you, they can go up to you and you can tame them and they're your friends now. This So the game actually caters to multiple playstyles. One is active and one is casual. Casual and hardcore. Hardcore only engages if you, like, get active with it. And the way it's balanced is... The more power you expend destroying the shadows, the more they, bigger they get, the more difficult it becomes. And that's where the balance comes from. And the thing is, you can reach to a certain point where you're actually outpacing the shadows in destruction, and that's how you win. And there's also different scenarios where the robots do push through your lines and make it to where they're trying to go, your power well. But that's not actually defeat. 
Like, there's a lot of complexity to this. And these guys over here, the thing is, these aren't actually a faction specifically. Like, you're your own person. Like, there's this war going on, but then you're over here doing whatever the heck you want. Thing is, you can join them or them. Yeah, the scale, the, di the difficulty scales dynamically. Like, the campaign won't be static. There won't be a set amount of things to do. Like, there will be different random encounters between civilizations. Like, there's different factions in between the zeals themselves that you work for, and that kind of changes what goes on with the storyline. Like, one one faction is the mediators, one is the liberators, and one is the regals. So there's three sub-factions per faction. And who you work for dep changes your difficulty. If you're working for the regals, you have a big tanks and things get more difficult. If you're looking for the liberators, it's not quite as difficult. Because you have smaller vehicles. Yeah, they're like mercenaries. Yeah, those are the liberators. Those are the mercenaries. You're right. Those are the mercenaries. That is the mercenary faction. With the Zeos. So that's Regals, Zeos, and Mediators. Mediators are the ones that are just industrialization. They don't actually fight. What? Cold color. Like, they don't actually do anything. I'm looking for a good color. Here we go. Green is good. No. That's good. So it depends on which faction you're working for. Higher difficulty, medium difficulty, lower difficulty. With the robots, it's the same thing. There's three sub-factions. There's the... The Horde. The Legion. Those are the ones that replicate whenever there's power around. There's the... Hive Mines, which are like actually evil. And those are the people if you like just want to be evil and destroy everything. And there's a third one called the... The Transients. And they're with this faction. Halfway. Voice actors. Yes, I have thought about that. That's where the budget's gonna go, most of it. Voice acting. I think it'll just be babble speak because there'll be a lot of voice lines that they have to do so it's, it makes more sense it was babble speak because these are not actually humans I think so there's gonna be a lot of voice acting that's gonna take a grant though which unreal does grants so that's good that's where the prototype comes in once you have the prototype you can get funding can we just drop the dynamic cause one of either if do whatever God yeah, that's exactly who they are, actually. That's exactly how it works. Like, right here, Spectral. If you're Chaotic Good, you work with the Zeos and you do whatever that what they want. If you're Chaotic Neutral, you can just do whatever the heck you want and do nothing. Or you can go with the robots, modify the world, blah blah blah. So if you're like the third faction, you can influence what goes on between the fight between them and everything in between basically or nothing you can join the mediators you can join the intelligence I haven't come up with the name of them yet there we go yeah I will I mean I haven't yet but I will once the prototype's done it'll be a shoe in I hope we can get the actual voice actors going. It does require voice actors. And also VFX artists like sound effects. Because there's going to be a lot of sound effects that it needs. Because the thing is there's a lot of high caliber weapons going off. So we're going to need a lot of dynamic effects for that. Just destroying everything. Explosions, etc. Something I can't really do myself. There are specific sounds that I do need. So yeah, I do know what I'm going for. I know exactly what I'm going for. Just have to get to it. 
And yeah, and these guys aren't necessarily gods, like... If they got in the way of this fight, they wouldn't do a whole lot, like... They'd get in the middle of it and then they just trampled, basically. Or shot, or whatever. They can't do a whole lot. I mean, they can't be killed, but they can't do much. Like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna walk up to this building and try and knock it over? What are you gonna do? Unless you upgrade yourself. Because that's kind of another power fantasy with that. Because it's an RPG that's actually... You scale your character. Like, you blow up in levels. And you can become a literal god, basically. And just go around destroying everything if you want. Or building everything if you want. That's what the third faction's for. But the thing is, they, they won't actually be unlocked until after you complete the Zeo campaign. This is the first campaign, the one you start off with. But in arcade mode, you will be able to choose between all three factions. Because there will be arcade modes, whereas you're pitted against the other in a one map kind of thing. And that's kind of how the prototype will be as well, be more arcadey. The campaign will have to wait until the actual game. The prototype will have arcade modes. You will be able to choose between the other three factions. And yeah, they're, they're not gods, they're demigods. Just because they can't be killed doesn't mean they can't can do anything. So yeah, there's that. What's the game you're looking for to do? Specific parts. Yeah. One is procedural generation. So the thing is, what I'm looking forward to, which will be happening very, very, very soon, as soon as I'm done with these pipes, this is what I'll be focusing on, or actually procedural animation as well, because the way you build bases is very different from other games. With other games you make, like, you have a module, and you place the module where it goes, and that's just how you build a base. That's how it is. With this one, you'll actually have prefabs of modules, like all of this set of stuff. You just put it down, and it'll generate those modules for you in certain configurations. And the thing is that the reason for that is because there's going to be a lot of modules involved, because the destruction system will be catered in a way that is global to both all three factions. For example, I will pull out. See if I have him. I will just jump this guy. The way destruction works is everything is components. Like this piece flies off, that piece flies off, you blow off the limbs of creatures and they're procedurally animated that they respond to it. There's a lot of little pieces involved. And the system will be designed to handle that. So pieces are flying all over the place. And that'll be like put between all three factions. So the buildings will follow suit. They'll be sufficiently complicated in a way like that. Like tons of different components. All instanced off as geometry. In a way that doesn't tank the game's performance. But yeah, just instanced geometry. And the building system will be procedural, so all that goes a lot faster. So you'll be making comparatively very complex bases very fast. And that's how the game will go. Like tons of different, like, giant buildings and stuff. The game is very big. Like, a lot of big things are happening. You're a little person in a big world kind of thing. And that's where the giant role was coming in. Actually, I think we can, real quick, I know I've been off on this tangent for a long, long, long time. I just can't stop explaining. Yeah, like very big bases. When you're going in arcade mode, you got like giant bases and stuff. And things will like explode a lot, a lot of explosions. Yes, indeed. So.
So yeah, it is kind of like module building, if you put it that way. And let me think. Now that you mention it, let me think. What is the defining difference between that and module building? The defining difference is you don't have to actually make the base. Like, you can leave it to the AI to make the base for you. And you can just put very rough directions in. Like you can say, I need a, a structure module right here that does such and such. Just right here. Like you can put in the parameters and then you can leave it to itself. And then the AIs will jump in and make the base for you. Because the thing is, this game caters to a lot of play styles. And a lot of people don't care for building bases. And that's why a lot of the base building will be automated. So you can make big bases without actually getting into it. And you can focus on the combat. Unless you are focused on making bases, then you can make more efficient base modules. Because... Beasts drive slightly over an edge. <laughs> Dramatic things happen when it drives over the edge. Very dramatic things will happen. Physics aren't in for it yet. But yeah, like, the thing is... Components will break off and stuff. I haven't actually gotten into it yet, but I don't know if it's actually feasible. But I would like... Actual soft deformation. I don't know how I'm gonna make that work, but... It's nice to look into. But the idea is, if the beast fell off a cliff, which it's going to do, someone's going to do that, there's a lot of cliffs around. Oof. I'm going to look into soft deformation, because that's how it would break. The beasts would break, like, deform before they break off. So there's going to be uh, some massive vertex deformation, kind of. Which I'm not sure how that'll work into collision. Yeah, there's a lot of unknowns with that. It has to happen. In what way it'll happen, I'm not sure. I think I had to cut that out because it was starting to lag. I sure hope the robot voice isn't back. That'd be lame. Let's see if this stream is still up. It should be. <sighs> I wish I had good internet. I'll just wait until it comes back. So yeah, the reason I opened up UE4 just then was to show the scale of the creatures compared to the actual machine. Which we'll just do that here. What I meant is, it was only one, say one leg of the base could be over an edge. Does it tip? Yes. It'll tip. It'll be physicalized. It'll fall over. If you go halfway off a ledge, it'll be just kind of dangling on the edge there. If you, and also you can blow off legs too. If you blow off a leg, then you can be kind of tipsy. I guess we'll try one more time. Just for, see if the stream handles it. And yeah, you can't, you'll be able to drive off a cliff and it'll be dangling there. It'll be physicalized. It'll respond. I don't know where it 
went. I had a creature. He went missing. Anyway. Well, let's let's do this guy. Nah. Didn't work. We'll do it this way. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, let's be realistic about this. The problem is not in the idea. The problem is not in the game itself. It's not the work involved. It's not the mechanics. It's not the objects. It's not anything about that. It's me. Can I get organized enough to do this regularly? Where'd my crash test dummy go? Actually, let's just go copy them from over here. What is the game title? Well, I don't know yet. We'll get there when we get there. Right now, it's just called the Zeo game, for lack of a better term. Not sure. So, yeah, little creature in a big world. This is your player character model. Stream says it's not smooth. Hope it's all right. Stream is being choppy. I'm not sure why. Unfortunate. But yeah, that's how big your character will be compared to the beast. You're only about 140 centimeters tall. And the thing is, the beast will not be the biggest object in the game. It'll be the biggest vehicle, but not the biggest object. Like the robots you face will get roughly yay big. And like you'll be fighting inside them, kinda. Or working for them. Like whenever you choose the robots, your base that you build will actually be inside the robot. Like you'll have a mobile base. With the Zeos, you have a base that sits in one spot and produces machines. With the robots, you are the machine. And everything is huge. Like, everything's oversized. Which might be kind of disconcerting to a lot of people. Like, whenever they're playing the game, everything is just too big. Like, they might feel, like, overwhelmed, kind of. Which, I guess... That's why they would choose the third faction. So there's no fear of death, kinda. It doesn't matter where you go. Like, this will be a game that you can play with anyone. That's what I want. Like, say your girlfriend booted it up with you and they're like, playing with it. And she'll have a fun time too, because she can't die. Or your little brother, or your little sister, or your grandparents, or someone. But at the same time, it'll be like hardcore experience where if you really get into it, you can speedrun it and get really crazy with it. And everything moves faster, everything's insane, everything's exploding. So it'll be for a lot of different people. A lot of different playstyles, a lot of different things. It won't be for everyone though. 
Like, this isn't an everyone game. This won't be to the main. There's a lot of things that won't have. So I'm not butting up too much. But yeah. There's a lot to it. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. We'll get off our high horse here. Tangent over. I mean, it's hard to explain a lot of this stuff because I have to convince myself sometimes. I do know it'll work. I just have to do it. And I really, I have no actual tangible evidence. Like, I don't have a playable prototype. I don't have all these things. So whatever I say, a lot of this stuff is, I feel, you can you can hear it in my voice. I can't, I don't feel very confident. It's not because I can't do it. It's just because I have no evidence yet that I can. So, yeah, I'm going to be real. I hope the stream's not choppy, it might be. Yeah. Definitely. And that's why I was saying before, I don't care about topology. Like, AAA Studios? they really do care about topology and your model quality and stuff like that but for me it's like I have a lot to do so I don't really care about model quality so much gameplay comes first graphics are second but graphics are up there so they must have good graphics and this is the collision for the tank I actually made it here in SketchUp these are the collision primitives to each individual component. This is what collides with the world. They are all convex holes. I custom made them because I wanted to have very specific behaviors. Because there's auto convex holes in there, but then it doesn't really do what I want it to. So, whenever you make them custom made, then you can get the behavior that you want. Like for example, this right here goes slightly upward so it can go over slopes. Yeah, and I don't expect it to be a perfect game, not in the slightest. As good as I can make it, make it won't be perfect. Good enough. It will be very good though, I, w I hope. I hope. I know it will be very good. If I make it the way I want it to, it'll be a fun game. That's all that really matters. Doesn't need AAA graphics. Something I can do. Just gotta get that confidence. Anyway. That was it. I guess that's it. Rant over. Rant to a close. I didn't do any convincing, I don't think, but I don't need to. The things in the coming months will be all the convincing people need. Once we get that procedural generation going, that'd be great. I think I have something for that. I have done some procedural generation. And it was very a lot of fun. Figuring out all the vector math and all that good stuff. Different components. So that's what we're going to do for the base. But yeah. Anyway. Caught myself again. It's very exciting to talk about it sometimes. Because that is the future of modeling, I feel. Okay, as well. A game many years ago which played inside SketchUp. Wow. How do you play a game inside SketchUp? 
Is it like an RPG? Like a tabletop thing? And then he goes with a plate inside SketchUp. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, a game wasn't my first choice. I was about to make animations. That's what I wanted to do. But then making a game is like, it's up my alley. I guess I'm just going to have to do it. How do you play a game inside SketchUp? Ruby and JavaScript. Oh! You make a game out of Ruby and JavaScript? That'd be interesting. Cool. Yeah, I'll check that out sometime soon. Yeah, that would be cool. Check that out after the stream. Which I'm starting to think this stream's gone on long enough. I mean, let me look. A while, let's see. Quite a while, actually. I mean, I could drone on and on. I'm not sure what. I don't know. Lack of confidence sometimes. It's fun just to make stuff sometimes. Completely random things. Oh, that's cool. Wait, that is the wrong link. Yeah, I don't think you can post links in the chat. They don't really show up for some reason. I'm not sure why. I think Tricky tried to put one in there. Didn't quite work last stream which I still haven't seen what he was making that'd be interesting Yeah, I think maybe on your channel, maybe? We just look up your name, maybe? YouTube's kind of weird sometimes. Eh, don't like that. I did the video from my channel. Ah. We'll just imagine it. Ah. Or put the link somewhere. Yeah, R Tricky was trying to put a link in. I wonder what a good method for that would be. wonder if YouTube has PMs? No, I don't think it does. It's gotten really late over here, so I might hop up soon. Yeah, it's 4.30 here. Normally I do farm chores at seven but I have to do them six now because a lot more work now so yeah I'll get off very soon as well I mean I said last stream I'll only make it an hour long and here we are I don't know how many hours we're in two I don't know eh this didn't go anywhere anyway yeah I will just call it where it is We'll get there. This isn't anything to do with the game. This is just random stuff. The game will have geocannons, but not this one in particular. And the prototype will only have like one. 
or two. Like, won't have a lot of them. Anyway. I guess that's it. What note do we want to end it on? Yeah, we'll figure out a way to link things. Like, Tricky was trying to do stuff, and in D3D, yeah, we'll... Maybe make a suggestion to a site. I'm active on Instagram and Reddit. I don't know. Anywhere else is good for PMs. Just for fun. To see what people are up to. Anyway. Guess we'll stop the music. That'll do. Thanks for... Actually, we'll keep the music going. It doesn't feel right. Thanks for being here, y'all. And thanks for listening to me ramble about random junk. Irrelevant nonsense. Things that will come to pass but not have quite got there yet. Empty promises, which will be fulfilled. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Nothing is made. It will, it will get made. Don't worry about it. Maybe not fast, but it'll get made. There's no way I'm giving up on this one. And yeah, thanks for being around, y'all. Very interesting. Ah, thank you very much. That's good to hear. Sometimes you just doubt yourself for no reason, but I just doubt myself anyway. But yeah, thanks for being around, and see you next week. And see you later, too.